Oh, friends, dear, dear Night Vale friends, do I have some exciting news for you. Are you ready? You sound ready. We are bringing Welcome to Night Vale back out on the road beginning March 27th of 2022, going all the way through June 24th. We're touring our live show, The Haunting of Night Vale, all over America. D.C., Charlottesville, Durham, Atlanta, Tampa, Dallas, Austin, Portland, Seattle, San Francisco, L.A., San Diego, Phoenix, Santa Fe, Boulder, Woodstock, Brooklyn, Philly, Boston, Toronto, Hello Canada, Grand Rapids, Chicago, Milwaukee, St. Paul, Iowa City, Lawrence, St. Louis, Cincinnati, Columbus, Pittsburgh, and Newark. Holy cow, I'm excited to see all of you again in a theater, to be in the same room, to laugh and cry and scream and chant and stare fearfully into nothing. I love theater. It's going to be great. Tickets for these shows go on sale this Friday, June 18th. Check out welcometonightvale.com, click on live shows for a full list of cities, venues, news and showtimes. Oh, and by the by, if you're a Weird Scout level or higher at our Patreon, you get first dibs on those tickets. Patreon folks get to buy tickets beginning tomorrow, June 16th, so get on that. We couldn't do this show without our Patreon, so if you've thought about becoming a member, maybe today's your day. We only got to do two performances of The Haunting of Night Vale last March before everything shut down. It's such a good show, and we were so sad we couldn't keep touring it, but now... It's time. It's time once again to hit the road. And these shows aren't until March, but man, I've been trying to get tickets to some theater that is months away, and people are buying up tickets like crazy. So don't wait. Get your tickets now before they're gone like toilet paper in summer of 2020. Okay, I'll shut up now. This is our ninth anniversary episode, after all, and it is a special one. I hope you enjoy it as much as we love putting it together. And hey, theater-loving friends, thanks. In 1994, Lawrence Henwick lived an easily unnoticed life. He worked at the cell phone kiosk at the mall, did his grocery shopping late at night, and mostly kept to himself. His few friends were those he had known since high school, and he only saw them one or two times a year. He was polite and orderly and kept the world out. And maybe this would have lasted the rest of his life if he had not let his car registration lapse. A routine traffic stop led a suspicious officer to obtain a search warrant on Lawrence's house. And what the sheriff's secret police would find would put him in the record books of U.S. law enforcement, a collection of material considered so illegal and so vile that many agents refused to transport it to the station. Lawrence Henwick was in possession of the largest collection of writing utensils in the country. I'm Phoebe Judge. This is Criminal. Listeners, something has changed for our quiet little town. It seems that the rest of the country has become aware of our existence. I don't know what this means for us. We are usually such private people content with our corner of the world. I hope this doesn't affect real estate values or property taxes and the like, but then maybe tourism would help boost our economy a bit. I suppose we shall just have to wait and see. This is The Sporkful. It's not for foodies, it's for eaters. I'm Dan Pashman. Each week on our show, we obsess about food to learn more about people. When we talk about pizza, we don't talk enough about the crust. There's thin crust, cheese-stuffed crust, thick crust. But no matter what crust you prefer, it's not a pizza without it, right? Maybe not. On today's show, we talk with Rico Goldblum, owner of Big Rico's Pizza in Night Vale. As their saying goes, no one does a slice like Big Rico. No one. And that's probably true, because all of Rico's pizzas are crust-free. How do you eat that, let alone cook it? Time to find out. Hey, your friend, host Steve Carlsberg here, and it's time for Dotted Lines, the only podcast to give you the truth behind Night Vale's lies. Today, I have my daughter Janice on to talk about the total lack of wheelchair accessibility at the Mudstone Abyss. Lee Marvin was many things. A decorated Marine whose medals included the Purple Heart, who was discharged as a private after being demoted for troublemaking. 
a Western actor, whose work in Cat Ballou earned him an Academy Award, and a man who turned down a starring role in Jaws because he thought it would make him look silly. A veteran who publicly opposed the Vietnam War, and the defendant in the case of Marvin vs. Marvin, which established the concept of palimony, the financial support of a former partner to whom a person was never married. But least known of all is Lee Marvin's later life, after he moved to a town called Night Vale. A strange little desert town, almost unknown to the rest of the world, in which Lee Marvin would turn 30. And then turn 30 again, over and over, every single day a birthday. Time would cease to move for Lee Marvin. To be honest, even I find this story difficult to comprehend. Join us, won't you, for the story of Lee Marvin in Night Vale. Hello and welcome to Oh No, Ross and Carrie, the show where we don't just report on French science, spirituality, and claims of the paranormal, but take part ourselves. Yep, when they make the claims, we show up so you don't have to. I'm Carrie Poppy. And I'm Ross Blotcher. And this week... <laughs> oh my God, this is so crazy. Yes. This is a wild one. Okay, so this week we checked out the <laughs> Joyful Church of the Smiling God, and it was... <laughs> I mean, well, we are already smiling, we're, just describing it. We're definitely <laughs> smiling. Very painful. In fact, it won't stop. And I think it's permanent. And I think it's permanent. And it's it is, it, painful. Oh, it's Ted. Who is Ted? It's technology. Entertainment. It's the Ted Radio Hour from NPR. I'm Anoush Zamarodi. Today on the show, wheat and wheat byproducts. Can they be trusted? This episode of Comedy Bang Bang is brought to you by Yearn.com. Have you ever yearned? You know what I mean? What a pain it is to yearn for things. Sitting by the window, looking at the sky, feeling specific emptiness. Ah! Every one of us does it all day, every day, and it leaves little time to eat or sleep or make long-running, incredibly successful, critically acclaimed comedy podcasts. Well, now there is Yearn.com. You tell us what you're yearning for, and one of our professional yearners will yearn for it on your behalf. Yearn.com. Yearn better. Yearn now. All right, back to the show. We are here with Lee Marvin, star of the new HBO sitcom Howard's End. Brothers, for years, my brother-in-law was pretty mean to me. He works at the local community radio station, and he would tell lies about me from his position there. Ooh. Oof. Telling his listeners, for instance, that my scones lack salt and are tasteless, which is no. ridiculous. Uh, I am an excellent scone baker. Recently, what, everybody feels like they're good at scones. Anybody who's ever made scones, I feel like, feels like they're good at scones, right? Well, it's hard to make if you can make them just to begin with. It's already an achievement. Recently, we have reached a point of understanding and are now quite friendly. Sometimes, however, I feel like his niceness can just be as aggressive uh, – sorry, mm. can be just as aggressive as his former meanness. He still talks about me on the radio, and he shouts compliments about me to the government agents tasked – with watching my house. Mm -hmm. It's overly friendly and it makes both me and the government agents feel uncomfortable. Oh. How can I help him find a balance between his former malice and his current well-intentioned but overly friendly behavior? What do you think, Trav? Hello, Guy. Hello, Tim. Welcome to another episode of The Worst Idea of All Time, a title that feels, if I'm honest, more and more literal every episode. Yeah, sort of a joke at first, but now more like an eternal torment. Yes. So we are watching the movie Grown Ups 2 once a week. This is our 10,003rd watch, so that puts it at... Uh, just around 190 years we've been doing this. Right here in this grey room where there is nothing but a grey couch and a single TV that only plays Grown Ups 2 once a week and otherwise does not function. Oh, it's a grim existence, Tim. It really is. What was your shining light this week? Uh, I had a dream that we escaped this room. It was a beautiful dream of freedom I felt. Light on my face. I saw the sun. 
Uh, but then I woke up and well, and I was here. Well, it seems that our existence is causing something of an uproar for the rest of the country. I'm not clear why. We are just one small town, ordinary in most ways. We are Americans like you, unless you are not American, in which case, unlike you. Surely this clamor and outcry is unnecessary for a town as tiny as ours. But what do I know of the world? Honestly, very little. Hi, I'm Gabby Dunn, and this is Bad With Money. Okay, Deadbeats, today we're talking about how money works in a very strange place. I'm sure you've seen the news. I don't have to tell you. We've all discovered that there's a town called Night Vale in the American Southwest, and <laughs> folks, it's very weird. It's just, wow, a very strange place in more ways than I have time to summarize here, and I love to talk. It might not surprise you to learn that my first thought upon hearing about Night Vale was, huh, how does money work in a place where, until recently, time didn't even work? Money is so much a trust game. The belief that currency will still be worth something by the time you get around to spending it. How does that trust game work in a place with a literal sheriff's secret police? To find out, I hopped on the phone with a couple citizens of the town. I had to. And the first was named, are you ready? The Glow Cloud. Let's hear what they had to say. Today on the pod, the discovery of a town called Night Vale within the U.S. borders in which every known law of physics and metaphysics is broken. And what does that mean for the upcoming special elections in Minnesota? Also, President Biden looking at cutting funding to a vague yet menacing government agency. Can he do that? And should he? This is Under Understood. Hey, everyone. Hello. Hello. Hey, Adrian. What do you all know about the town of Nightvale? The town of Nightvale. You know, I think I know kind of everything. Mm-hmm. Like I just woke up recently and the knowledge was just in my mind. And I knew literally everything there is to know about Nightvale. And everything about the town is impossible, but my knowledge of Nightvale is absolute and involute. Yeah, me too. Me too. Welcome to the Dark Owl Podcast. I'm Michelle Nguyen, and you are definitely not cool enough to listen to my music opinions. Ugh, end of episode. Goodbye. This is The Illusionist, in which I, Helen Zaltzman, Try to find language on a map. Mm -mm -mm. There it is, it's up there at the top, right next to the Great Lakes. This episode is about Michigan. Or is it Michigan? Or Minstercan? Michigan. Michigan. No two people have ever agreed how to pronounce the word. And if you've never heard of Menchiten, you're not alone. It's widely considered the least recognisable state in America. All right, so the guy sees a dark planet lit by no sun. Oh, Dave. And above his workplace. What? Uh, d what do you mean, what? Dave, I don't like where this is going. So, okay. So he decided to move to Night Vale. I knew it! Oh, my, every time. Yeah. Ah. Uh. I'm Sarah Marshall. I'm working on a book about the satanic panic. I'm Michael Hobbs. I'm a reporter for the Huffington Post. And on this episode of You're Wrong About, we're going to talk about the Mudstone Abyss. Ooh, it's like Boston's big dig, but in the desert. All right, Sarah, should we get to our listener mail? Yes. Our first email is from Cecil Gershwin Palmer. Cecil says, Hi, Percast. Hi. My cat, Kaushik. Pronounced, pronounced Kaushik, by the way. Oh, okay. And I listen to your show all the time. He doesn't photograph well, but here's the best picture I own. Oh, let's bring out the picture. Oh. oh. 
Is this a prank? This this photo is completely dark. No, no, no. Wait, look. There's a faint outline. What? What? Are those wings? It's a cat, Stephen, not a bird. No, those are clearly tentacles. Everyone has a blind spot. It's literally the place on the retina where the optic nerve connects to the eye. No visual information is collected there, which leaves a blank in our vision. But these blind spots aren't obvious like a hole in a photo or a smudge on a window. No, even the existence of a blind spot is a blind spot to us. We don't see what's missing because our brain fills in the rest of the image. We think we are seeing everything we see, but we're not. So in 2012, when landscapers in the small desert town of Nightvale discovered the house that wasn't there, a scientist explained it as simply a trick of the mind, a blind spot. The house was right there when you looked at it, and it was between two other identical homes, so it would have made more sense for it to be there than not. After years of research, though, the scientists concluded that the house didn't exist at all. But that scientist discovered a blind spot of his own. I'm Aaron Mankey, and this is Lore. Hello from the Magic Tavern, a weekly podcast from the magical land of Foon. I'm your host, Arnie Niekamp, and six years and a couple of months ago, I fell through a dimensional portal behind a Ralph's in the town of Nightvale into the magical, fantastical land of Foon. And I am Musador, wizard of the... Wait, who, who is this Ralph? <laughs> Ralph is not a person, Musador. Ralph is a, is a grocery store chain on my world. Liar. Oh, and why were you behind Ralph? Were you trying to surprise him? Or, or puke? I was behind a Ralph's. Not behind a guy named Ralph. And I was just huddling with some of my buds. You know, like you do. Who is this A Ralph's? Huddle buds. I want us to be huddle buds. Sean, we are huddle buds. Come on, let's go oh, behind come the here, Ralph. Come here, Blue, wizard 42. Blue, wizard 42. Huddle, huddle. Hike. Oh. My legs are so sore. We just hiked yesterday. Oh, there's something about it. It's not as satisfying if it's not behind a Ralph's. Wreck it. Welcome to Whatever Happened to Pizza at McDonald's the Investigative Journalism Program, or IJP, where I ask the question, whatever happened to the pizza at McDonald's? I'm your host, Brian Thompson. Many of you have written in to inform me that there is a McDonald's in the town of Nightvale. This McDonald's does not serve pizza, but it does have a hole in the back that they call the pizza hole. It is a small hole in the wall near the storeroom, and customers are encouraged to crawl into the pizza hole. No customer has ever returned from such a trip into said hole. I knew I had to give this McDonald's location a call. Welcome to Song Exploder. I'm Rishikesh Hirway. Michelle Wynn is the owner of the legendary music shop Dark Owl Records. She's a champion of underappreciated music forms. But not a lot of people know that she was also the leader of the early 2000s music collective Hands, Legs, Mouths, Horizon. They're best known for their 2003 single, Buzz. In today's episode, Michelle breaks down the making of Buzz, starting with the demo that she created by shaking a beehive. And she tells the story of working with superstar producer Max Martin, who convinced her to update her sound by shaking a wasp hive instead. This is Maintenance Phase, the podcast that turns snakes back into wheat and wheat byproducts. Aubrey, I just want to eat a normal loaf of bread again. Hi, I'm Deb, the sentient patch of haze, and welcome to Night Vale Through the Side Window, your travel companion to all the wonders and delights 
of Night Vale. Today, we will be looking at the best hikes for kids in Radon Canyon, how to eat like a local at the moonlight all night, and how to leave Night Vale. Spoiler, it's pretty hard, and you probably can't. This is Hidden Brain. I'm Shankar Vedantam. When John Peters was 17 years old, he was an elite baseball player. Major League scouts loved his strength, his speed, and his mechanics. But before he graduated high school, John inherited his family farm. And he gave up his hopes of playing professional sports to grow invisible corn. Today on the show, Hometown Blues. Why we choose to stay in the communities where we are raised, and is it possible to leave? Hello, and welcome to Planet Money. I'm Mary Childs. And I'm Sarah Gonzalez. Today on the show, what happens when a billionaire dies and leaves all of his money, as he phrased it in his will, to the hierarchy of angels? And what do we make of the conspiracy theories that the late investor Marcus Vanston is still operating his business from beyond the grave. This is 99% Invisible. I'm Roman Mars. If you were a resident of the small desert town of Night Vale in the last 10 years, you probably heard radio commercials that went like this. Listeners, are you lost? Don't know where to turn? Might I recommend the The Brownstone Brownstone Spire? Do you need cash? Cast your eyes to the The Brownstone Spire. The Brownstone Spire. It's a real structure, but no one knew what the ads were selling or who was paying for them to play multiple times a day. We were inspired by crystals. You know how crystals have a voice, but not when you can hear. Just a resonance that speaks to you, up through your bones, into your viscera, and then overtakes your soul. That was the impetus for our marketing campaign, and it's been hugely successful. That's Missy Wilkes. She lives in Night Vale. She's also the director of community outreach for Wendy's. And so it goes. The world is talking about us now. After all these years, we have taken our place in the conversation. Well, I suppose it is nice to be talked about, now and then. But I don't think we should get used to it. Surely they'll move on. Once some new headline distracts. A plane crash, or blight, or the visiting king of a galactic civilization. These things come, and these things go. But if you are a new listener, I welcome you. You are all welcome here. Good night, Night Vale. Good night. Welcome to Night Vale is a production of Night Vale Presents. It is written by Joseph Fink and Jeffrey Craner and produced by Disparition. The voice of Steve is Hal Lublin. The voice of Michelle Wynn is Kate Jones. The voice of Deb, the sentient patch of haze, is Meg Bashwiner. The voice of Night Vale is Cecil Baldwin. Original music by Disparition. All of it can be found at disparition.bandcamp.com. Thank you to the many podcasts who generously agreed to take part in this episode. For a list in order of appearance, please consult the show notes. Comments, questions, email us at info at welcome to nightvale.com. Or follow us on Twitter at Night vale Radio. Or invent a desert town and spend nine years writing about it. Check out welcome to nightvale.com for info about our Night vale Live North American tour in 2022. We cannot wait to be in a room with you once again. Today's proverb. Hope for the best. Prepare for the best, too. It's going to be great. What could go wrong? Well, you need to start, I guess, doing more neutral things uh-huh. for him to observe. Um, Just standing right, at a between lo- the, right, right between the lines. Yeah, standing on your lawn uh, with as neutral a face as you can, wearing all khaki. 
is a good place to start. Mm -hmm. Maybe like um, a big sandwich baggie full of porridge or oatmeal because it's like, one. thank you for this. It is inconvenient, but I appreciate the thought. And oh my gosh, these two just canceled each other out. Yeah. And maybe uh, maybe like a fly a kite, but that's really bland and maybe like made out of like uh, some kind of plain white paper. Yes. That's, yeah, absolutely. Like informational like, you know, the parts of the tax form that you don't have to send back, but you print off anyway because yes. you're a bad boy. Perfect. Well, just make a kite out of those really boring things. And there's like, yes. it's neutral. This is perfect, right? Make it, make a kite out of like saran wrap, right? That's going to, you're getting, you're getting into some challenging aerodynamic ideas, Travis. That's fair. That's like fair. really challenging. That's fair. Uh, maybe, okay, here's what you do. You make some scones, right? Half of them, delicious. Half of them, gross. Right, mm. and then you just kind of mix and match. Okay, here's here's some. I want to red flag one of these. Okay, if they get one of the bad scones first, they're never gonna go back for a good one. You oh, know, to, like you're yeah, not yeah, yeah. you're not gonna house that bad one and then be like, let me check, let me try, let me find out, let me okay. try one more time. We do. How about like a, a a perfectly made scone? Yes, that is flavored like cut grass. Yeah, that's neutral. That's yeah. neutral. 